Today we continue with our class uh, Shabbos Kitchen and today's class number 24. And we start with uh, Sefer Chok uh, And uh, <clears throat> the big topic is the same laws of Thales. And today's topic is uh, constructive intent. Okay. People who speak Rehilus <clears throat> usually have some motives in mind, um, which they consider positive one. The Torah, the Torah views, however, is that unless the motive is clearly constructive, the speaker is, um, is doing nothing more than gossip mongering, and his words are strictly forbidden. So to Ellis is uh, just to remind us, right? So to Ellis is a speech when uh, somebody uh, comes to me and say, uh, you, you don't even know, want to know what happened yesterday in a place where I didn't got, did not go. Right, and he started telling me. So, I mean, uh, constructive purpose. Like, if it concerns me personally, whatever I need to know what actually happened, because of uh, maybe I can uh, lose money because of that, or my reputation can suffer this or that. Okay, so I, in some cases I must know, but otherwise, like, uh, who said what, and he, who was there, who was not there, who insulted somebody. Like, uh, it's uh, it's not constructive purpose. Okay. The most const uh, con common constructive motives that would permit a relative such information is for one person or someone else's intent to harm him. Right? So this guy said uh, he's doing this, he's going to do this and this to, uh, to somebody. Okay, so we can, of course, we, we can and uh, actually obligate it to one that somebody, that somebody is, uh, that, that guy is, uh, that said publicly he's going to harm him. To inform a person that someone is uh, presently harming him, right? So he's stealing from him, let's say, <clears throat> so he, that he can put the end of the situation, or to tell a person that someone has already harmed him, you know, something like uh, somebody stole from him, somebody, I don't know, uh, broke a window in his car and stuff like that, so that he can seek a restitution for the damage, if it is monetary, and at least prevent any further damage. Okay. So in all of these cases, it is uh, uh, under circum certain circumstances, it would be allowed uh, to say that, uh, to, to relate uh, some news, but otherwise it's not allowed. So we're going to go into details in the next uh, classes. Okay, stop here. <clears throat> all right. So in our, now learning, we're in the chapter 22. <clears throat> And uh, the big topic is the washing and drying dishes. Okay. Uh, okay, so we're up to section number uh, four. And uh, the, top, uh, the topic is how does one wash dishes? Right, so we're talking about shops. How uh, one does uh, washes, uh, washes dishes on shops? Okay. So we said uh, if it is needed, uh, so just to remind us, right? So if it needed for the next day or for, uh, like meaning uh, today's uh, Friday night, so I need uh, three plates. I'm sure the three plates uh, uh, for Shabbos morning. I, I'm expecting extra guests. I don't have so many plates. So yeah, you're allowed to, to wash this plate. There is no problem. And as we said, you, you're not obligated to wash like only three extra plates. You, you, you're allowed to, to wash any plate that can uh, can potentially be used. Okay, so maybe it's a bigger plate, smaller plate, whatever it needs to be used, or might potentially be used, so you're allowed to wash on um, Friday night. Or for example, if it's a uh, Shabbos day and you're going to, to, to eat the third meal uh, in your house and people are coming or your family, just just your family, so there is no problem. So in a Shabbos, after Shabbos morning, uh, meal, you, you, you're allowed to, to wash some dishes because it's uh, for, for needs of Shabbos. But if uh, but you're not allowed, as we said uh, last time, you're not allowed to prepare for a weekday. And so, same as Yom Tov. <clears throat> okay. uh, so A, hot water. In case where one may wash the dishes, uh, the use of hot water is also permitted. However, it's forbidden to turn on the hot water tap <laughs> on Shabbos. See chapter 23. So it's next chapter. Okay. Consequently, one uh, only hot water prepared before Shabbos in a kettle or urn, urn uh, may be used. 
Okay, we, we talk about it in ch chapter three, okay. It is forbidden to pour hot water over the dishes that contain hardened grease, right? Because doing so will dissolve the grease in violation of, I'm going to explain, uh, of knowledge, creating new entity. See chapter 13. Nevertheless, one may cause uh, the grease to be dissolved by um, immersing the dishes in the hot water, in cliche me. Okay, we're going to explain all of this uh, terminology later. However, one must refrain from rubbing the grease uh, to dissolve it uh, manually. Okay. <clears throat> so first, we um, we spoke about it before, and uh, it looks like it, that's, it's a subject of the, the next chapter that uh, you are not allowed to turn on the hot water on Shabbos, and we said why. Just to remind the people who join us just recently, so because uh, the incoming water into your heater uh, uh, is going to in is going to cook. So in in your uh, water heater, you have uh, hot water. And uh, once you open the tap, this hot water is uh, going out and new water, fresh water comes in and it's cold, of course, and uh, it's going to get cooked by, uh, by, the, old, uh, by the old water, the, the water that was previously there. <clears throat> so that's uh, the problem. Okay, so that's why we're not allowed uh, to open tap water, but as we said, you can uh, use the, you have cattle right, on the, on, um, on the blur. Right, so you, you you can take it. There is no problem. You can put hot water uh, into, let's say, dish pan or whatever you go, whenever you're going to wash them, your dishes, and you can add the cold water, mix it. There is no problem. So what would they say? The what the, would be the problem if it has hardened grease? Right. So you're not allowed to pour cold water. And the reason why, as we said, the uh, the um uh, it's it's going to 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 cause a new entity be created what is a new entity is a liquid so before uh so uh, this uh, this uh, food was liquid before then it's um uh congelated right and they become hardened like, like a grease on, on, on your plate and now you put water, hot water on that on that spot and it's going to dissolve which is absolutely forbidden. And of course, it's, it is uh, absolutely forbidden to use sponges and other things. Okay, so, and the problem is knowledge. Knowledge, I'm sorry, knowledge. A uh, new entity. Okay, but uh, we, we said before, uh, if it's done in, independently, and um, just to remind us, we were talking about, uh, about similar issues, not, not exactly, but similar concept uh, in, um, uh, in, in a situation when when you, uh, when we discussed uh, defreezing uh, uh, things right on Shabbos, so we said it's not allowed to, to put it very close to the source of heat. Why? Because it's uh, that's would be the reason it's going to uh, defreeze, right? But um, but you're allowed to put it under in the under the room temperature, so it can uh, uh, do do it by by itself, like slowly, slowly. Okay, so same is here. So you you allowed to put uh, these dishes with the grease on top of them, right? Into the hot water, even hot water. I mean, if you have hot water or warm water, whatever we have, and uh, let it dissolve by by itself. There is no problem. Okay, continue. Uh, next one, uh, soap and dishwashing detergent. It is forbidden to use bar soap on Shabbos. Three separate prohibition can apply to bar soap. Scraping. Smoothing, creating new entity. According to the most scheme, one may use liquid soap, dishwasher detergent. However, some scheme advise adding water to the dishwashing soap beforehand to make it very fluid. It is um, preferable to prepare this mixture before Shabbos. There is a special Shabbos soap available on the market, which is more liquid than the standard liquid soap. Okay, so let's try to understand. So first of all, uh, bar soaps are not allowed on Shabbos. So, and, and it's not only about dishes. So for example, somebody like uh, wants to wash his face. So bar soaps never allowed on Shabbos. What is the problem? First of all, uh, you do uh, scraping, right? You, you, you take, what is the scraping? You take uh, the, the top layer of uh, whatever, right, uh, thing. 
Uh, second uh, is the smoothie, for sure. You, you, you make it more smooth. And, um, and the third is uh, creating new entity. So what was new entity? Well, it was the, uh, this shape, right? Whatever shape it was. And now after you, uh, you used it, it, it uh, you, you create a different shape. Even if it's a little bit smaller, it doesn't matter. It's, uh, it's a new shape. And I, I just want to add for myself, uh, there is a fourth uh, possible issue if there are letters. Uh, on a, on a stop, so you're going to erase the letters, which is a different issue. So many many issues uh, using the bar soap on Shabbos. So I mean, I mean it's it's not allowed. Period. But no, we just explain why it's not allowed. And um, and most poskim say that there is no problem to use liquid soap, but they say what some some say some poskim. No, it's not everybody. Some poskim said some uh, do, um, do not make it like too. Uh, it, uh, make it a little more more liquid, right? So it would flow freely. So I, I mean, it's it's very simple. Uh, they say the Shabbos soap is available on the market. It's a, it's very expensive. It costs a lot of. You know, I mean, whatever. It's almost double price, I would say. And what is the difference? They just added water. But uh, look, it's on, all, always market for for lazy people. Right, so but uh, the advice is just add a little water, so it would be flow freely, and I could call it Shabbos soap. Use it only for Shabbos. Uh, otherwise, it's uh, it's too liquid. It's uh, right? it's not good, and that's it. Okay, so but you you're allowed to use uh, soap on uh, Shabbos to to wash your hands and to wash dishes. There is no problem. <clears throat> Next one: C, sponges and uh, sc scoring pads. It is forbidden to use sponge, washcloth, paper towel, or other absorbent material to wash dishes. It is uh, inevitable that the water will be squeezed out of these absorbent articles while washing, which is in violation of schita. Um, so, see chapter 24, we're going to get to it, about wiping up small spills with, with sponge. Okay, we're going to discuss it. Uh, for the same reason, it is forbidden to use a steel wool um, or a scorning pads, which trap water between the fibers. However, one may use synthetic pad, uh, whose fibers are widely spaced and cannot trap water. Uh, the use of nylon brush or bottle brush is likewise permitted. A rubber um, scraper may also be used to wash dishes. Okay, so let's stop here and let's try to understand. So one of the 39 milachas, right, that we cannot squeeze, right? We cannot squeeze the, the liquid or whatever is inside, right, or something. The, 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 some, the liquid that were, they strapped in something else. So that's why sponges is not allowed, right? Wash cloth, of course, it absorbs uh, water. Paper towel, exactly the same. So... Why? Why it's not a lot? Because inevitably, for sure, for sure, hundred percent guarantee, you're going to squeeze water. <clears throat> all of this uh, steel wool, all of these things, not allowed, right? Why? Because uh, the water is uh, even steel wool. I mean, uh, uh, there, there is water that, that absorbs. So what is, what is it allowed? Allowed is uh, this synthetic pads. Um, um, they, they, they sell it even in, in, in a regular store, in uh, every like discount store. Like, uh, so it's like a synthetic, right? And it's like a net. And uh, there's a pretty big holes, maybe like, maybe even a quarter inch holes, right? Like a hole, to, like, like diamonds, right? And of course, it that does not trap water. And uh, it's very inconvenient to wash with them, but uh, it's, it, it, is, it is allowed. It is allowed on showers. Right, and then he said nylon brush, but bottle brush. I, there are different uh, different bottle brushes and nylon brushes. There are some uh, like uh, on, on the higher end, the, the, the better one. They uh, they have this uh, these bristles that are very very tight, right? And they uh, they actually trap the water very good. So the cheaper ones, uh, it's the, the not not as much, but uh, so I would I, I would I would say. The cheaper ones that do not trap water, no problem. But uh, the the one that is thicker one, right, uh, the, with many many bristles, would not be allowed because same idea. 
it's going to trap water. <clears throat> Continue. Regarding, uh, so trap water meaning what? That you're going to squeeze it, guaranteed. Right? That not, not even like you, you that, that you're going to, to, to do this hand, even when you wash, like, uh, I don't know, whatever you wash. You wash uh, cups, right? With, with this, right? Whatever you wash, you, you cup. So you, you're going to squeeze because of why? You, you, you're going to, to put some, uh, pour some uh, liquid salt. On, the, on, the, on this brush, and you're going to squeeze the soap for sure. Regarding asking non Jew to wash one's dishes or having uh, him turn on the dishwasher, see the loss of uh, uh, instructive non Jew to do Milah, chapter 30. Okay, we're going to get there. Uh, regarding the storing dishes in a dishwasher, see uh, Halacha 13, uh, chapter 8. Okay, let's go. Let, huh? And uh, the halacha is preparing for a weekday, chapter 31. Okay, we're going to get it. So it's uh, it's, it's, it's an amazing book. He, he's uh, even one chapter he he said that, that I'm, I'm going to include things that we discuss in different chapters, but I, I'm going to give you the reference for details. Okay, so let's try to understand. Uh, so um, regarding asking Anju, so we have a rule. Wh whatever is not uh, allowed for me to do. Publicly, I'm not allowed to ask uh, Nanju to do it for me, right? Uh, <clears throat> so technically, I can ask the uh, Nanju to wash the dishes because I can wash the dishes, right? But uh, if he turns the or she turns the hot water, that's a different thing, right? So if I don't <laughs> don't look, uh, there is no problem basically. Okay, why? Be because I I told. Uh, this uh, this lady or the, the, this guy to, to wash uh, like this cold water with uh, with this uh, uh, nylon uh, pad, right? But he said uh, this uh, these crazy people they don't know what to do, right? So and he he opened the hot water and took sponge. Okay, so he technically he, he does it for himself for his own convenience, not not for me. I told him this way, but he did it his own way. Okay, okay. And about um, regarding storing dishes in dishwasher. So technically, we said there is no problem to store uh, the dishes in dishwasher. But uh, <clears throat> um, your intention should not be that you're preparing for, for Motsi Shabbos. So once the Shabbos is over, you, you push the button and they are they, uh, they, uh, nice and clean in, I don't know, like 40 minutes later. What I, what I, would, I, I don't know, I'm, I'm just, I, I'm not sure. I, I don't have dishwasher, so I, I don't know how long it takes, but let's say 30 minutes, okay, right? Uh, so this would not be allowed, but we say, for example, if a person has a very limited counter space and he wants uh, to use dishwasher for storage, so, and if you open the dishwasher and there is no light, and the, the, there is no, like, uh, things on a deal, on display, like, uh, like, uh, uh, it's it's not going to, to show like, uh, like uh, the sign that it's, the door is open stuff like that so that there is no problem so it's maybe it has Shabbos mode or uh, children or whatever some some kind of mode that uh, turns off all of the electronics yeah there is no problem so you can open you can put your dishes but uh, we said um, in that chapter eight uh, <clears throat> we discuss about sorting so you're not allowed to sort. Uh, like uh, big plates to big plates, a small plates, a small plates to small plates. This is going to this, this is going to that. So it's uh, it's forbidden showers. But if you just put them randomly, so you took uh, whatever stack of uh, plates and you put them randomly, this sure there is no problem. Okay. And the last we said the uh, halacha preparing for a weekday, right? That's that's what we said, right? Um, preparing for a weekday if you put it in the dishwasher. Okay. And and washing, right? So washing we're not allowed to prepare for a weekday. Okay, so whatever is uh, you might need for for the next Shabbos meal, it, it is allowed, right? Even a remote possibility, but all extra stuff uh, it's not allowed. For example, I give you examples. So um, for for the third meal of Shabbos, right? I I I for sure I'm going to use plate many plates for all my guests, all my students, there is no problem. But we usually don't drink wine. And some people do, but we, we don't drink wine. Uh, so for uh, okay, maybe we're going to eat 
I drink tea or uh, coffee or whatever whoever wants uh, to drink, right? But wine didn't, didn't have it. So for me, start washing now wine glasses. That's uh, for sure. It's like preparation for everything. It would not be allowed. But but to wash the dishes, whatever we might need on uh, for a third meal, there is no problem. Summary. <clears throat> One may wash dishes with hot water that has been prepared before shops. As we say. This uh, liquid uh, with liquid um, <coughs> with liquid um, dishwashing soap diluted according to sample skin and with that synthetic part nylon brush or rubber scraper. Okay, we miss uh, rubber scrapers. I mean, I'm not sure how many people use rubber scraper. Usually they, they use a rubber scraper uh, to clean the countertop. I mean, but if needed, I guess you can do it uh, for dishes. No, no problem. There's no squeezing, for sure. There's no squeezing with the rubber scrape. Okay, so continue. Any questions on what we said? <clears throat> okay, so then continue. Uh, part, uh, section number five drying dishes. <laughs> That's uh, okay. Introduction. When drying dishes, one must be careful not to violate the prohibition of ringing. And in some cases, laundering. See chapter 24, so we're going to get to it. Uh, regarding cleaning and wiping dirty, dirty surfaces. Thus, it, um, it makes a difference how wet the, the, the dish cloth uh, is or, uh, or can become. And in certain instances, which types of dish cloths are used? <coughs> okay, so let's try to understand. So we already washed uh, wash the dishes. And now we want to wipe them. And during the wiping, it could be two issues: ringing, meaning, uh, uh, what, what does it mean, ringing? Uh, ring uh, the, the wet towel. It's too wet, right? I mean, I, I'm not sure how 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 many dishes you need to wipe in in order for the towel to be so wet, but uh, technically it's possible. Theoretically, for sure, it's possible, right? And uh, and another thing is uh, laundry. When we learn about laundry, <coughs> so um, so for example, if this uh, this towel was not uh, very clean, and now we apply the clean water, right? So even from from dishes, so maybe it's going to get laundered. Very interesting. <coughs> maybe it's going to get cleaner. So let's see. We're going to discuss this one by one. Uh, section B. If uh, if one if the dishcloth will not become saturated, if the dishcloth um, <clears throat> and and cutlery, if, uh, I'm sorry, if the dishes about if the dishes and cutlery contains only droplets of moisture, and um, and there there aren't that many dishes uh, and or pieces of cutlery to dry, the cloth uh, will not become saturated. So I, I guess the, the way I understand at least uh, how we wash dishes in our, in our house, uh, you know, like start drying right away. Uh, we, we first put them in drying rack, and then uh, after the uh, after some time, so after we finish, so then if needed, we will we'll dry some some dishes. But uh, most of the time, they're going to dry by themselves. But let's say they need it for now. Okay, now I don't have time. Okay, so. So if, uh, if uh, as they say, if it's only droplets of water, and I, I assume like most of the time there are only droplets of water, and unless you have, I don't know, balls, and then you, you didn't uh, pour the water out, maybe then it would, it would be a lot of moisture, but otherwise there is no problem, right? They say uh, not, not too many dishes or cutlery, okay? So the, the, the problem is with uh, this drying cloth, so it would not be like too, uh, too, too wet, okay? Thus, in this instance, not only one is permitted to use dish towel uh, to dry the dishes, but he would also be permitted to use a, a cloth napkin or garment that people ordinarily wring, wring out when wet. Okay, so let's see. All right, so so we, so in, in this case, when we don't have uh, uh, a lot of water. Let's say they, they were in uh, staying in dish rack for I don't know, for a few minutes, 
right? So we, we can use a dish towel, I mean, of course, uh, to dry dishes, but also permitted to use a cloth napkins. So cloth napkins cannot, uh, cannot absorb as much as a towel, of course, right? Or garment that people uh, ordinarily think when wet. I know why, why would somebody use a garment, but let's say somebody use uh, his undershirt to wipe uh, the, the dishes for whatever reason, right? Uh, okay. Even though uh, if it would be too, uh, too wet, the person would drink it, but not in this case because that's not too much moisture. Okay. Continue, C. Uh, if the dishcloth will be saturated, so now, now it's dangerous. Right. If the dishes and cutlery are wet with more than uh, just uh, droplets of moisture, so I, I would say in, in this case they didn't have time to to, to put it in a dish rack. So they started like washing and started uh, drying right away. And there are many dishes and or uh, cutlery um, pieces to wipe. So meaning that's for sure that that would be very wet. One should uh, pay attention to how wet the towel is getting uh, in, um, as he continues drying dishes. I mean, he, he can wash uh, all, all, all he wants, but uh, my, my understanding is, I mean, if it's very wet, it, it's not going to absorb more water. It would be useless just to, 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 to continue drying the dishes with this towel, right? Once the dish, when the dish towels become completely wet, it must stop drying the dishes or replace the towel with a dry one. So that's, uh, that's the thing. But, uh, but uh, more, more practical reason, I, I think uh, would be like, uh, it, that does not absorb the water, but, uh, but they're trying to, to get their point across. And the point they're trying to make is that if it's too wet, so one might be tempted to wring it. However, if it is only partially wet, one may continue to dry the dishes with the part of the cloth that is not wet. Okay, so you, okay, no problem. So one, wet, one side is wet, one is not wet. Okay, so, so you should you switch the side. Let's say you have a bigger towel and uh, you use uh, the, the dry one. However, since uh, in this instance, uh, there, um, there is, exists a possibility of in, inadvertently wringing out the cloth, a cloth, uh, a cloth napkin or garment may not be used. Okay, so so meaning he's saying the author is saying use something that absorbs more water. So use towel, don't use these napkins. Okay, summary: If one is drying the dishes that uh, only damp or marginally wet, one may use a, a dish towel, cloth uh, napkin, or garment to dry them. When drying dishes uh, that are very wet, one must be careful that the dish towel does not become saturated. Additionally, he may not use a cloth napkin or garment to dry them, only dish towel. Meaning, uh, we, we gotta be careful not to not to wring the, the thing that, that we're drying. So if it's not too wet, so there is no point of wringing, but it's very wet, so we, we gotta be very careful. Okay. So any questions on what we said? We continue. Okay. So we continue with next topic. So those are short topics. Other topics, uh, go ahead. Well, somebody? Rob. Yes, yeah, go ahead. Yes, yes. Uh, could you repeat on the, um, the uh, cleaning of the wine glasses? Can you repeat that again? What did you say about cleaning the wine glasses? Is there a specific? Oh, wine, wine glass. So it, it was it was not in the book. It was my personal example. So <clears throat> so we said that we are allowed to wash only the plates and cutlery, whatever we need for for the for the Shabbos. So for example, Friday night, right? You you can wash uh, practically whatever you want because you most likely you would need them uh, all these uh, dishes uh, the next uh, for the next meal. And then we said also that um, even if you need one plate, you can wash all of the plates, right? And of course, wine glasses. So it, since you're obligated to drink wine uh, for, for uh, or grape juice for Friday night and Shabbos day, of course you need glass. There is no problem. 
So my example was that uh, some people uh, make uh, may, some some people drink wine, right? Some people drink wine uh, during the the third meal. Inshallah, some do. Okay, our custom do not drink wine. Okay, because we learn Torah, we don't need to drink wine, right? So for me, after the Shabbos day, to start washing uh, these uh, uh, wine glasses, it's clearly preparation for a weekday. So I'm, I'm trying to save time. I'm, I don't, but it would. Uh, it, it seems like a person is trying to save time uh, for after Shabbos. You understand? That uh, was my, my example. So, but if I need plates, for example, I have more people come over. We're going to, I have a study group on, on Shabbos days. So, okay. So uh, let's say we are short three plates. So I can uh, wash eight plates just in case. Maybe maybe somebody would uh, adore the plates. They need another one well, for whatever reason. There is no problem. But wine glasses, absolutely not. So whatever you need, you can wash as much as you want, as, as you want. But whatever you need, do not need, you are not allowed to wash. Make sense? Yes. Okay. Good question. Yeah. <clears throat> so continue. A any other questions? <clears throat> uh, yeah, one more, one more. Okay, no problem. <laughs> Go ahead. Same, um, same price, same price. Go sorry. <laughs> no, no, no sorry. I'm just sorry. Um, it, when you said about uh, stuff soaking and things like that, so let's say um, our, our little one, she spills a drink on the table or some, um, or can we still use a napkin to, to wipe okay, it up? So or how, how do we do something like that? Okay, so if you wait another 15 minutes, we're going to get to it. Okay. So uh, yeah, it's uh, chapter 24. And exactly what you're asking, cleaning and wiping dirty surfaces and spills. I don't okay, want to give a partial answer. We go, it's, uh, it's a long answer. Okay. okay, so we're going to do Thank okay. you. Sure. All right. So that's uh, trying to be very, very practical in these classes. Uh, <clears throat> okay, so uh, chapter 23, hot water tub. Introduction. Open the hot water faucet is, uh, is, a typical <clears throat> is a typical home setting, in a typical home setting. Cold water flows from the city supply by the force of the pressure. So they, they, they give us pressure, they, they give pressure to the water and it comes to my house, right? Turning on the hot water faucet allows the cold water to flow into hot water tank, which in turn forces out the hot water uh, already in a tank. Uh, the water in a tank is typically uh, more than uh, 110 uh, degrees Fahrenheit, which is minimum temperature for cooking on showers. Hence, then, <coughs> hence, the incumbent cold water is immediately heated by the hot water uh, already in a tank. For this reason, one may not open the hot water faucets on shelves. Okay, uh, I, I actually explained it before, but uh, since we're on a topic, so let's explain in details. Uh, so if you live in your private house, right? So you, everybody have this uh, hot water tank, right? And uh, the water comes in so uh, from, from the city, so one part, and then it splits, right? So it comes from the city, then it splits. One goes to the regular cold water, and uh, another pipe goes to the, your hot water tank, water heater. So, and this water, uh, it's under the pressure. So it comes from a big pipe, I don't know how many, so two and a half inches, right? And then goes to the small pipe of yours. Uh, I don't know, what is it, uh, cold water? Uh, well, let's say one inch. I think maybe one and a half inch. So that there's a big pressure, right? And this big pressure up, uh, pushes the um, pushes the water, uh, hot water out. So uh, when when you open the faucet, the the the, the, uh, the hot water faucet, right? So it, the, the the water, uh, hot water goes out, and cold water goes in, right? And it becomes uh, cooked. So, and uh, cooking is one of 39 milachas. Uh, and I'm not going to repeat everything we said, but uh, uh, that these lectures on, uh, online, they start posting just recently. So I'm not sure how many, maybe, uh, I think maybe two, 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 two classes already online, Shabbos Kitchen, for sure, you, you, you have to watch it. And uh, so, so they're not allowed to, to cook um, things on Shabbos. And of course, the, the easiest thing 
<laughs> is there to cook his water, right? It cooks uh, uh, the fastest. And, um, and that's it. So technically, so practically, we cannot open the hot water uh, tub on Shabbos. Continue. Why? Because the water, the new water is going to get cooked. Continue. Number two, <clears throat> when the faucet, uh, when the faucet is open accidentally, if the hot water uh, tap was accidentally opened in Shabbos and water is flowing from the faucet, the correct action will depend on how much time has elapsed. Okay, not so easy. So, uh, so na natural reaction is uh, to close right away. Okay, so you, you're allowed to, and it's proper to close right away, but uh, let's say it's some time passed. Okay, so people do not know. So some people freeze, right? That's uh, also a thing. People, they, when they do not know what to do, they freeze and they don't do anything. Okay, <clears throat> so uh, following scenarios. A, uh, for a short amount of time, if the tap, um, if the tap was, uh, if the tap was turned on, and run it only a short while, one should immediately turn it off in order to prevent more cold water from coming in, uh, from coming in contact with hot water in the tank. So, okay, well, whatever happened, happened. Whatever water already in a tank because of you, okay, it's, uh, it's not a lot, but uh, that's a uh, past. So you have to stop it. In, uh, in this case, where tank typically retain the hot water, <clears throat> A short while could be defined as up to 15 minutes. So that's uh, that's very good <laughs> for us, right? So if it's up to 15 minutes, uh, you, you can shut it off. Okay, now different scenario for a long uh, amount of time. However, if the hot water tap was uh, already left running for a longer than 15 minutes, let's say kid forgot it, right? <laughs> Uh, he he, uh, he was taking the shower and he forgot to turn off. And things happened. It happens, right? More, more than 15 minutes. Uh, a significant amount of cold water has already entered the tank, thereby bringing down the temperature of uh, the water tank. As, uh, as such, uh, if more cold water enters the tank, it will not become cooked upon contact. On the contrary, um, if one were to turn off the tap at that point, he would transverse the milah of Bishop cooking, as he would uh, cause the fresh water remain trapped in a tank and thereby cooked uh, by the boiler. In this case, one may ask non-Jew directly to close the tap. Okay, so let's try to understand everything, what, what we just said here. Okay, so what, what, what we said, okay, short amount of time, 15 minutes, okay, clearly, you have to shut it off. Why? Because uh, because the more water is going to cook. Okay, that's clear. Um, long amount of time. So let's say more than 15 minutes. So um, all of these uh, hot water heaters, they have uh, limited capacity, right? They have 50 gallons, 40 gallons, uh, 75 gallons, 100 gallons. It depends on the family, like uh, how much you need to hot water. So if, if you have a small household, I don't know, only, few, only a few people, and they uh, take, let's say, showers in different time. Like uh, maybe 40, uh, 40 gallons would be ju just enough for you. And why, why should you waste time and energy, right? But uh, if uh, people uh, take showers one after another, so and they wash dishes uh, in, in the same time, and there is uh, four or five people in the household, so this 40 uh, gallons is not going to work out, right? So. So the, the longer is uh, the water is the hot water is uh, running. So the the hot water heater has does not have enough time to warm up the new water, and technically the water inside the hot water heater like uh, the temperature went down below Yatsaladas Bo. Yatsaladas Bo, they said uh, uh, the minimum temperature of cooking. What is it? One hundred and ten degrees. It's uh, Right, so 110 degrees, okay. So now let's say that the water was running for, I don't know, 30, 40, 50 minutes. Let's say, I don't know how much, okay. Hey, even more, let's wait, let's say one hour, right? One hour, so uh, the water in, uh, in that uh, hot water uh, <clears throat> tank is very, very cold. I mean, not very cold, but at, for sure it's below, below Yat Saletas, but below this 110 degrees Fahrenheit. So, and now if you shut off the, uh, 
the well, shut off. I don't know. The, this there, yeah, this way, right? Uh, you shut off the valve, right? Uh, the, the the faucet. So meaning what? So this water, the cold water, is start is going to start cooking and uh, uh, warming up. Why? Because of you. And now you actually being Michal Shabbos by what? By cooking water. You understand? So it's even bigger problem. So in this case, the, the, the only the only solution is to ask an angel. So and uh, in this case, you can ask them directly. Directly, because of why, why can you ask them directly? Uh, and in some cases, indirectly, because uh, this uh, his um, his action are going to cause grammar. So what is grammar? It's in indirect result, right? So I did something, and uh, after some time, something happened. So it's not directly. It's not like when, when I push the switch and the, the the lights went on, right? No, right? It's uh, I, I did something, and after some times, uh, something happened. That's grammar. So I'm not allowed to do that. Grammar, no grammar, not allowed. But I can ask uh, Nanju to do it for me. Okay, that's uh, this. Uh, and there is a separate subject about what we can ask uh, non-Jew to do or not, not allowed to do directly, not, not directly. That's a separate class that we are planning to do. There's Raskashim. Continue. Single-handed faucet. That's the issue, right? <laughs> if the single-handed faucet uh, on, on, on his sink, he must be extra careful on Shabbos. This is because even my uh, minute amount of hot water can be mixed with the cold water if one does not turn the handle completely toward the cold side. So actually, the, um, we have this uh, single handle uh, uh, faucet in, in two, two places. So on Shabbos, it's like uh, it turned like up, like extreme, extreme. Uh, uh, what is it? Uh, on, on in one force, I'm not sure. Maybe they did not install properly. But in one, uh, in one, it's a right side, and on another, it's a, a complete left side. Whatever. So to to make sure that only cold water is going to come in. Otherwise, uh, it, it's dangerous. So in if you have two handles, there is no problem. So you just open cold water. There is no problem. There is no no danger that you're going to mix uh, this hot water. But with uh, but uh, <clears throat> with the one handle, that's a possible issue. Okay, so you gotta be very careful. In fact, some handles allow a small amount of hot water in, even when they open only to the cold side. If one has such a sink, it is best to turn off uh, the hot water switch now underneath the sink uh, uh, to, to the off position before Shabbos. Okay, I'm. Uh, I'm not sure even even how to to check the, what, what he's saying. So he said there is some uh, um, uh, one one handle faucet that allows some hot water, small uh, amount of hot water, to enter into the coal. I I think uh, I don't know. I mean, uh, how how can you, can, can you test it if you open uh, completely on the cold? So how can you say that? Uh, has hot in it. Okay, so, but for, for whatever reason, if you have such a, if you know you tested somehow and, and you know that hot water is still coming in, so you just uh, switch, uh, you turn off uh, the hot water like un, un, under the sink. <clears throat> okay, if it works. And many, uh, like if you have older house and you never uh, uh, re replace it, if it's I don't know, 50, 70 years old, it's not going to work. Okay, so be careful. Summary, one may not open hot water tap on showers, for sure. If it was open accidentally and less than 15 minutes uh, have passed since it was turned on, one should turn it off. That's clear. So I, I, I would say in most of the instances, it would be less than 15 minutes. So even with the kids, I mean, most of the kids, unless they're very like little, so they, they train to, to, to shut off the water. Um, if uh, if more than fifteen minutes have elapsed uh, from from the time uh, it was open, one may ask Nanju to turn it off. One must be uh, extra careful with a single-handed faucet. Okay, 
So we explain all of this. So let me check time quickly. Okay, so we have time to start the next subject. Any, actually, any questions on what we said on this topic? Okay, no problem. So then uh, we continue. With if you live in a building uh, where most of the people are not Jewish, is it allowed? Uh, exactly, exactly. That's a, uh, thank you very much for the question. So, so what Abraham is asking, so if you have a big, you live in big building, kind of nine floors, 10 floors, uh, 20 floors, right? And most of the, thank you very much for reminding, and mo most of the people are non-Jewish and you are opening the faucet, so or hot water, hot water faucet in a normal time. So normal time you're opening, uh, let's say Shabbos uh, uh, 10, 10 a.m., 11 a.m. So most likely you're not alone and maybe 10, or a hundred other people open the faucets right now. Cut one, right? So in this case, you, according to, to many paskim, you would be allowed. But if you want to to take a sh shower, I, I'm, I'm not talking about shower. So, but if you want to do something, uh, let's say two, two in the morning or five in the morning, it would not be allowed because most likely you're the only one or only, only few of the people in the whole building then using it. But uh, when most of the people, non-Jewish, just to reiterate, and uh, you open it in a normal hours, it would be allowed, yes. Okay. That's a good Thank question. You. Thank you very much for reminding me, yes. <clears throat> so why? Because uh, mostly it's it's very, very small chance that this, uh, and they have a huge, <laughs> they, they have huge water heaters. So ju just because you, you open up for a few minutes, it's not going to, uh, mm, it's very, very improbable that they, it's going to start working because of you, right? It's because of the other people. Okay. So continue. So uh, chapter 24, uh, cleaning and wiping dirty surfaces and spills. Okay, exactly what you will ask. Introduction. There are two melachas that can be violated while cleaning the surface or wiping up uh, the spills on showers. One is ringing, so same like you're you ringing. Uh, and second is lounging. For a lengthy discussion of this halacha, is Shabbos form one, uh, volume one, chapter 12. So uh, these uh, classes are online. In our channel, Bizrat Hashem channel, uh, I, I would not say what uh, uh, what, uh, what class is it, but uh, I, I recommend everybody to, 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 to watch it from the class number one, because uh, there are many details. Of course, we're not going to repeat them here. So here we, we discuss in this class, we discuss only things uh, relevant to, to, to kitchen. And I just add from myself, just a summary. So we have uh, uh, like uh, some basic ideas. In this chapter, we'll discuss practical application for training to the kitchen and eating areas. Okay, number two, part number two, practical applications. Uh, a, cleaning the uh, tablecloth. Okay, that's a good, uh, right? Tablecloth. Uh, number one, removing stains. Tablecloth table made of absorbent fibers, for example, linen or cotton, or woven uh, cloth made of nylon or polyester fats, which uh, become dry or stained, may not be um, moistened with water at all. Wetting them entails milah of laundry. So you have a normal, uh, regular, you have a linen, uh, linen right, tablecloth. So, and somebody spilled uh, whatever they spilled. Uh, so you're not allowed to put, uh, to, to pour water on top of it, right? Because it's the first step of laundry, how, how, how you laundry, right? So you, you soak, you know, it's like you, 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 first you soak in the water for some time and then, uh, and then you, you do other things, right? So, Absolutely not allowed. Continue. Uh, so all, all of the absorbent uh, tablecloth cannot be wet. Okay, cannot be wet on on Shabbos. Uh, like if 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 your if your purpose is uh, is to clean them, a plastic vinyl or a fox uh, fox leather tablecloth, which are not absorbent, may be moistened with water and wrap lightly to loosen the dirt uh, with one's hand. 
or with a um, synthetic or rubber uh, scouter. Sc scouter. Okay. 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 They see see below page two ninety eight. We're going to get to it, but uh, may not be wrapped forcefully. One may also avoid wetting any uh, trimming made uh, of absorbent fibers. Okay, so what, what are we talking about? So now we, uh, we have a different um, tablecloth, uh, which is plastic. So plastic, uh, not absorbent, right? Vinyl, not absorbent. All this uh, fake leather, not absorbent. So technically, if you spill something, right, and it's hardened, so you're allowed, uh, you're allowed to, to, to put, uh, to, to pour water on. There is no problem, right? But you, you can rub, rub slightly, right? So they, they, they would not set, uh, the stain would not set on, on this uh, tablecloth, but not, uh, not, uh, not for, for, forcefully. Okay. Uh, and um, it's very interesting point that he said, and be careful, don't, don't pour so much water. So, so would not wet any trim. So sometimes uh, they put like this trim, uh, from from the fabric, like uh, around uh, around the tablecloth. So if you put too much water and it's going to uh, roll down uh, the the tablecloth, it can uh, wet the string, which is uh, uh, which is not allowed. Okay, continue. Removal. Uh, so, so so technically, I mean, if you 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 just have to be prepared if you, if you want to use. Uh, Fancy schmancy ta ta tablecloth. So, for example, we have um, there is a special one, uh, um, the water resistant, the stain resistant. Uh, well, the stain still st like uh, uh, most most likely it's uh, like a, the stain is is not going to set most likely. But if you use like oil or stuff like that, it's going to set. We have to wash it. So uh, what, what you do, you just put napkin on top of it, and that's it. There is no problem. Whatever, whatever get absorbed, absorbed. But uh, or put plastic, plastic on top. It's so uh, if you have small kids, I mean, you're not going to yell at these kids every three seconds. So let them spill wherever they want. Okay. So number two, removing small wet spills from the tablecloth. If a drink spilled uh, on absorbent tablecloth, uh, for example, a small spill, one may not uh, squeeze the wet area. Uh, these two would uh, would uh, would involve the uh, the lack of skitter. I'm not sure why would somebody squeeze, but well, let's say they want to squeeze it too much uh, uh, liquid in one place. Okay. However, one may place napkins, pre-cut paper towels, a rug, or a towel uh, over the wet area to absorb the liquid from the surface. Uh, when cleaning up spills, care uh, must be taken not to squeeze water out uh, out. And now um, out uh, out of the wet now wet napkin, right? Paper towel, uh, towels or rug. See below details about wringing uh, uh, up, uh, wiping up the larger spill. So if you have a small spill, so uh, <clears throat> as as we said before, it is not allowed to cut things on Shabbos, especially uh, according to the measurement specific uh, specific. So all of these paper towels. You must prepare before Shabbos. You, like we always prepare, I don't know, uh, I don't know how many pieces, to, uh, 12, 30, I don't know, 40, I don't know, a lot. A lot. I mean, uh, they, they don't go to waste. You're going to use it uh, the, the next Shabbos. But uh, just in case, since we're not allowed to, to, to tear them apart, so to tear them apart from the roll, so we, we always have to prepare or you use napkins, whatever, whatever it works. Right? So, <clears throat> and napkins, of course. They're much better than regular towels. Why? Uh, because uh, you, for sure, you're not going to wring them. Why? Why, you, why? Why would you? You just uh, uh, wipe the spill, right? Be careful. Just take take the napkin, put it in the garbage, and that's it. That's it. Or take a paper towel and put it in the garbage. Okay. But towels, as you said, there is no problem. Okay. Unless um, you're going to say, unless you're trying to like. Uh, Unless you're going to improve this towel, the, the color of the towel, you're going to see. <clears throat> okay, B, wiping up uh, up spills. Okay, so, uh, okay. Okay, wiping up, uh, up spills. Number one, wiping with a towel or rags. 
So he's he's a problem. So of course, Taolu, you you want to to reuse it, right? So and like even automatically, you, you would uh, want to wipe um, ring it. One is permitted to wipe liquids with a towel or rag, uh, since one has no interest in squeezing them out uh, after they become uh, saturated. Okay. However, one may not wipe uh, a large spill with a single towel or rag if the if the cloth is obviously too small to absorb the whole spill at once. So I mean, uh, we have to be like realistic. If it's a small like uh, I don't know, like a hand towel. And now, now you you're trying to 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 wipe the whole the, the big spill, so it's not going to work. And you, like like accidentally, you might ring it. This would um, require ringing out the towel or rack at the intervals, thus transgressing the prohibition of skita until the entire spill is wiped away. So that's that's so what we do with uh, when you have spills somewhere. That's what like uh, on on a weekday. So you you take a rack. You 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 put it on, in the water. So you ring it. You put it again. Ring it again. Ring it again. And that's how you spill. You ring one hundred rad. You can work with one, right? If you have a spill, like on a regular day. That's why they say make sure that uh, uh, that, uh, that this uh, towel or rag is not too small, or you have several of them. Thus, one uh, one must ensure that the towel or rags are large enough. Or being several of them before uh, begin to um, to wipe in the uh, begin the wiping process. So that's that's for sure. I mean, because people would do what they automatically do. They would ring it. Okay. So make sure that you like whatever, uh, how, however many rags or towels you have, it's going to be enough uh, for the to clean up this uh, spill, big spill. That's why I said I don't know. Maybe we have even thirty pieces of. Uh, <laughs> this paper towel, just in case. Look, kids spill, uh, the guests spill, the guests. Uh, okay. They don't want to embarrass anybody, just uh, so we can clean it fast. So number two, uh, wiping with paper towel or napkin. One is permitted to wipe liquids with a pre-cut <laughs> paper towel or napkin. Uh, un um, unlike uh, with a towel or rack, it is not necessary to make sure that the, there is sufficient paper towels or napkins to clip uh, to clean up uh, the whole spill at once. Since there is no concern that one uh, will uh, wring out the napkins or the paper towels in order to reuse them, rather um, uh, he will throw uh, throw it in a garbage can. Still, uh, if the napkin paper slash paper towel is saturated, one must careful one must be careful with the picking it up. So it uh, would not squeeze it. So here's the thing. Okay, uh, um, on, on one hand, uh, nobody is going to to, to reuse uh, napkins or paper. As I mean, if it were, some people would reuse it, I guess, on a weekday. But uh, but on Shabbos, so you have to be careful. And what uh, what I always recommend to people: so you, you bring uh, the garbage can next to you. So you you put this uh, you put this paper towel napkin. Into the spill and put it right away into the garbage. So you would not have to carry through the whole kitchen, and now you you will squeeze it in incident accidentally. So don't do that. Okay. Okay. So continue. Uh, number three, wiping with the garment uh, clean liquids. So that's uh, uh, that could be a problem, right? As we learned in our uh, class about uh, Shabbos home. <laughs> So it looks like uh, clean liquids. It looks like you're you washing. It is forbidden to wipe clean liquids, for example, water or another clear odorless liquid, by using one's garment or linens. Since these garments linen, uh, slash linens are only usable when dry, and one may have uh, an in, uh, interest in drying them out as quickly as possible. The stage is forbade wetting such a public on shower. This is out the fear that um, one will likely forget and uh, will come to ring them out. Okay, especially like if it's uh, so the, the if it's a dirty one, uh, if it's a dirty liquid. I mean, uh, what what you're going to achieve? You're going to achieve exactly zero if you're going to try to, to ring it. But clear liquids, yeah. So the person can re re reuse. Let, let's say it's water. Somebody spilled water on you on. Um, 
uh, on the table, right? So if if somebody wipe with a clean towel, so he might uh, want to engine to put it uh, to dry in uh, I don't know, like half an hour, one hour later, it's going to be clean to use again. That's the problem. Moreover, one may not even uh, even cause the garment or linen to become partially wet, <laughs> since one may inadvertently squeeze the out the wetness. So fully wet, partially wet, not allowed. One more time, orderless, uh, clear liquid. <clears throat> and above prohibition applies only if the fabric becomes wet, wet enough to motion the second surface to the extent that the second surface could still transfer some moisture to the third surface. Okay, so let, it's uh, it's very, very interesting uh, definition. How I would say just explain what is wet. So what is definition of wet? So there is a, some uh, surface wet. I touch my finger to that surface and I bring the finger to another surface and uh, let's say spill, let's say tablecloth, right? So how do I know if it's wet or not? So I touch it with my finger. Well, I see my finger wet. I feel it's wet, right? And I touch the countertop. And then I see it's countertop uh, uh, wet or not. So if it's not wet, so that spot is not halakhically wet. Even though it is wet, I see it with my own eyes, but halakhically it's not wet. If I cannot transfer um, the, the moisture to to the third place. That's uh, that's uh, halakhic uh, definition of wetness. <clears throat> Number four, wiping this garment co uh, color or dirty liquids. One is permitted to use a garment or linen to wipe up the color, dirty or full smelling liquid. Since these liquids leave um, um, uh, residual stain or odor, the garment remains solid, soil, I'm sorry, the, the garment remains soil, even after drying. I mean, uh, so even if you squeeze this uh, liquid out, maybe it's it will going to absorb it better. So don't, don't do anything, right? Therefore, there is no concern that one will wring the liquids out of the garments, because why? It's not going to serve any purpose. As mentioned above, if the garments cannot absorb uh, the entire spill at once, one may not wipe uh, up the large spills uh, with it, but must bring other garments or rugs uh, to wipe up uh, the spill before beginning. Okay, so usually somebody wants to get napkins, uh, they, they put around, they are trying to absorb as much as possible and uh, it's a very exciting process usually. <laughs> okay, so but as we said one more time, there's a, uh, um, garments, if it's color of the dirty liquids, uh, if false, uh, uh, um, full of smelling, there is no problem. But one more time, it, it has to be like, uh, have to have enough material to absorb the liquid. Number five, wiping spills with a sponge or mop. So the, the, the problem with the sponge or mop, so a sponge is automatically people like, uh, naturally, right? Well, what do you want to do with a sponge? You want to squeeze it like, Natural reaction. A sponge uh, is a solid mass of extremely tender material. Um, in, or, in order to, to pick it up, uh, one presses it slightly to get the grip on it. So, okay, so, so it's soft. And so, in order to pick up, as they say, so you press, press it down slightly. Okay, see, I never thought of it. Okay, very interesting. Um, when, when a sponge is completely soaked, <laughs> after cleaning up uh, a large spill, it is inevitable that some liquid will be squeezed when one uh, uh, squeezes out, even when simply handling. So that is say, even uh, like uh, you, you, you put it in, in into this uh, spill and it absorbs whatever it absorbs and you're trying to pick it up. So they say, inevitably, you're going to squeeze some liquid. Uh, thus, one may not. Uh, thus, one may use sponge only to clean up small spills. Okay, small. Okay, it, it's it's going to, to absorb, but it's going to be stay mostly uh, dry. This time, uh, um, small spill, um, which will um, um, which will still allow the sponge to be handled without squeezing. So the problem with the sponge is the squeezing. If sponge has a handle. It is no longer considered inevitable uh, that um, that squeezing uh, will occur 
when handling it. I'm not sure. Oh yeah, there, there is like a handle and like a small, small sponge, like I inserted. In yeah. Okay, it's possible. Okay, so they, they say this one, this is even more lenient. Since the person does not handle the sponge itself, so it's, as we said, indirectly. The sponge may then be used to wipe it, uh, even the largest skin. So, but here, to um, as much as it's capable to absorb. So wipe, we mean like uh, you, you just put it there, like whatever it absorbs, it's, it's absorbed. That's it, that's what means wipe in this case, right? So you, you cannot squeeze and come back. A mop or a regular sponge without a handle is considered clean Shalamach Poli Isur. Okay, see so chapter 28 uh, on Mokta. Uh, may not um, and, and may only be used if no other item is available to wipe up the spill. In the event that one must use either the regular sponge or, or a mop, uh, extreme care must be taken. Um, extreme take, uh, after the wiping up the spills, not to squeeze out the liquid in a sponge or mop that absorbs. So let's see. So, um, so we don't wash uh, the, uh, the the one we don't wash usually. Don't wash the uh, floors and showers. Why? Because of the problem of squeezing. Right. So first, thing. so this mop, regular regular mop or with a with a, with a sponge, is a cliche shlamak laser. Meaning, uh, <clears throat> so what, what, what does it mean? It's a utensil uh, whose primary uh, purpose is forbidden on shelves, but it could be used for something else. So the classic example of this would be hammer, right? So the, 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 the primary usage of hammer to, to drive in uh, nails, right? Or take out nails, whatever, right? But, um, but it could be also used in case of necessity to, to open up uh, uh, coconut. Okay, so if you don't have anything else, so you can use hammer. Okay, so that's what they, they say here. So if what, nothing else is available to pick up this uh, uh, spill, right, to clean up the spill, okay, you can use this uh, map, uh, but be, be careful not to, not to squeeze it. However, one may, uh, may not use any type of sponge to wash dishes. <laughs> okay, since it is inevitable, that the water will be squeezed out in the in the process. So, um, so to um, to clean the spill, yes, but very careful with this uh, sponge, but not uh, not to wash dishes because for sure you're going to uh, squeeze. Okay, a few more minutes and we finished. C, cleaning hard surfaces. Although uh, there is no prohibition on wetting the hard clean surface. Uh, for example, kitchen cut the counter, tabletop vinyl paper cloth, and, and rubbing uh, it with water, it is prohibited to use wet cloth, paper towel, or napkin to scrub uh, the surface. Since one uh, will inevitably squeeze the water out of the wet cloth, uh, or paper towel, or napkin. One should first apply water and, uh, cl and a cleaning agent to the dirty area, and then scrub the area with one's hands uh, or a, a scourer uh, that is permitted on shelves. See chapter 22 for washing and drying dishes, for example, permitted scourers. Okay, so we're talking about the, this uh, uh, this thing uh, the, what is it, um, that does not trap water. Okay, so technically, all of this prohibition about uh, laundering uh, applied to some something like a soft and pliable. Okay, so that, that is absorbent. So of course the plastic is not absorbent, your countertop is not really absorbent, your table is not absorbent, right? So if there is a stain, so technically you can wash it away, you can put some water, there is no problem, right? Uh, you can to take this, uh, um, uh, this uh, not a sponge, but uh, the, this thing uh, with, with, uh, like, that does not drop water, and no uh, with water, uh, or with, with with your hand, you can scrub a little, and uh, that's it. And you, you can pick up uh, the, 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 the liquid with a, with a napkin, throw out, no problem. So I, I would suggest if you have small children, like, I don't know, they, they tend to 
uh, to uh, knock out things. So it's just better get uh, get yourself plastic on top of your tablecloth and that's it. It would be easier for everybody, for kids, uh, for guests, for, for wife, for everybody. Okay, so we finish. Any questions? On this topic, any topics? Please go ahead. <coughs> Rabbi, I have a question. Please, go ahead. Uh, the Sefer Torah on Shabbos, um, what are the rules of carrying the Torah? Okay. Oh, oh, carrying the Torah? Okay. So, uh, I mean, uh, I'm, I'm not exactly understand what you're asking, but if you wanted to tell like the whole procedure or tell me, that, tell me exactly what, what you're trying to ask. For example, if one was reading a Torah scroll and was sitting, let's say, on a balcony and they drop the Torah scroll and it falls down to the ground and then they, they go to pick it up, they have to carry it above their head in order to be able to pick it up on Shabbos, right? So my question is... Um, what one, 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 could, could, could you go back? Why, why is somebody on a balcony? Like in a okay. shul or somewhere like in a private No, let's house? say let's say they have a small house, okay? Small and house. it has a way to get up on top of the house and they're sitting on the top of the house like a like a balcony, like a like an upstairs. Okay. And for some reason they drop the tour or the scroll falls off their lap and rolls and it okay. lands on the ground. Okay. Now when they go to pick it up, what are the rules of carrying the Torah? Okay, so it's a it's very, very abstract example, but let's try to, to understand what is, a, what is the problem here. So first of all, yeah, right? so it's very, I don't know how practical this example is, and unless you, if, it is, uh, if, it, if it's a real life example, it's very, very sad that it's happened. Okay, so a, better, it happen a, better a, way put, a better example would be, let's say someone, is at their home and they're reading the Torah and it falls off their lap onto the yes. floor. Okay. Is, there... is it what's, sorry, it, 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 it broke up, it was breaking up. Is it what, what was the question? So, so let's say they're sitting at home, they're reading the Torah and it's Shabbat and it falls on the floor and they mm -hmm. have to pick it up. They have to go pick it up and carry it back to their seat. What's the rules? Okay, okay, very good. I mean, the, the, this is more more practical question. So, uh, so, so he, he, here's the um, here's the situation. So somebody is uh, reading the Torah uh, Torah scroll in his house. Let's say they have a minion in his house. So, uh, and anybody like uh, for example, I, I just give you the broader answer to, to your question. I'm going to answer to your questions. So technically, it does not have to be synagogue. For example, I have a basement or I have a room in my house that I don't use, and I want to I want to make a minion in there. I want people come to that uh, to that room on Shabbos on a weekday doesn't matter, and uh, and I pray. So this room is going to have a status of a synagogue, and I'm allowed to to put the sefer Torah. So there is a special rules higher higher have to treat this room, okay? So and of course in this room we're allowed to read the, from the sefer Torah. There is no problem whatsoever. And then what happens, this safer Torah falls for, on the floor. So it's very, very, very bad home. It's like very, very bad luck. And uh, the whole community, or at least, so there, there are a few opinions, Shulchanor said, uh, at least all of the people who saw it, they must fast. Right? They, they, or according to some opinion, the whole community must fast. Because many bad things happen, has for Shalom, has for Shalom, to the community whose Sefer Torah was on the floor. So meaning that people do not treat the Sefer Torah properly. You understand? So could, could you put us on mute while we're not talking so Thomas. There is a, Thomas, there is a, a lot of background noise, so thank you, sorry. So, uh, so when, the, so the, the Sefer Torah on the floor, you pick it up, you kiss it, and uh, that's it. You can uh, continue reading from it. There is no problem. There is no other halachas that I'm aware of. So except, as I said, 
it's a very bad omen. The whole community must fast because of the calamity that they can happen from this. You understand? So, and it's on, on one hand, you, you can say that it was accident and somebody like uh, uh, whatever slipped up, but there is no accident. There are no accidents. So it means that Hashem is not happy with that place. When the Torah scroll is on the floor, it's, Hashem is not happy. You, usually when a person is getting the Torah, Torah scroll from the Aaron Kodesh, you see like uh, uh, it's usually the strong, stronger person. It's not somebody weaker, like elderly person. And he would hold the, with his right hand, like very, very strong, very strongly. With two hands, depends. If it's Sephardic Torah, it's, uh, uh, it's, uh, it has a lot of silver. It's very heavy. At Ashkenazic, uh, that depends also. If it has a crown, also very heavy. But without crown, it's uh, much lighter. Right. But uh, there are no other special halachas that uh, pertain to it. The same, same with the book. Right. If the book fell, your sidur fell on the floor. So you have to pick it up and kiss it to show that you, you, it's like you didn't just throw out uh, throw, throw, throw it on the floor because you, um, because it's uh, you you don't like it or whatever it says that discussing to has to show no it was accident but uh, you have to kiss it okay did we answer the question or you meant something else yeah I just have one more additional uh, Please, question okay. to add to that w what about reading the humash on Shabbat or uh, a book of Musar like the Path of the Just or something like that um, what are the rules in regards to that. Uh, you, you said Humash, and then you say part of uh, Path of the Just. So what is, uh, what is the connection? Please explain. Well, I mean, I mean, reading, let's say, if you want to read out of the Humash, or if you want to read, let's say, Musar, what yes. are the rules for the Musar or the Path of the Just, or I mean, or the Humash? Okay, okay. So, all right, all right. so, so you, I mean, we're talking about per personal learning, right? Not, not in the show. So you finished with the show, you came home, and now you have time. So in the summer months, so it's a uh, person is, is not allowed to take very long naps. You understand? The, all of the summer days like were like designed by Hashem to, to give us time to, to learn the Torah. So you're allowed to, to learn whatever Torah you want. But, uh, but the, the first priority, always first priority, uh, because it, it is a mitzvah, that you have to learn uh, the Parsha. Right, it says uh, you have to read the text once of the uh, twice text twice of the parsha and um, and uh, targum, which is a uh, uh, translation of the uh, targum ankulas. Or in, in our case, if you don't know the targum, no problem. You can read uh, uh, Rashi or any other commentary. Rashi is preferable to any other commentary because it's a pshat. is a is a simple understanding of the, of the parasha. So that's takes precedence. So before other Musa books, you that's uh, that's the first precedence. You, you finish parasha, even though it's uh, um, proper to, to read every day a little on a Friday night, maybe on Friday day a little more if possible. So you finish before before the Shabbos, before the Shabbos starts. But in case uh, you don't, like I. Many, many times I don't. Uh, I have uh, um, a lot of things to do, right? So, and other classes to to, 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 to conduct. So I, I do it on, uh, what is it, on uh, Shabbos day. I finish it. I finish like 30%, 20%, whatever is there. And only after I finish, I start other topics, but not before. And uh, technically you can learn any, any, uh, any, um, uh, any proper books on Shabbos. I say proper because some some of them improper and uh we, we must understand that understanding that the, the the spiritual level of the person uh, it is much higher much higher on shabbos and uh, your comprehension will, will be much better so whatever you did not understand you would read the same text during the week you would not understand not you but uh, in general right the person but then uh, then you read during the shabbos and since we have extra godly neshama uh, godly soul so you would understand, right? So that's, uh, so don't waste your time or uh, the conversations. Don't waste your time on guests too much. So my guest, no, guess what? One hour, we drink, we sit, we, we, we read the weekly uh, Parsha. That, that's what we do around the table. 
uh, I think it's a good uh, good advice to everybody. So in, instead, so people uh, usually don't know what what to talk about. So uh, so what what we do? Uh, we, we read the weekly parsha, and uh, then everybody have to say something. Like uh, everybody can contribute. Kids can contribute. Adults can contribute. Grandparents can can everybody can contribute something. You understand? So in this uh, in this way, you you're going to have around the table the Torah conversation. You you don't have to like memorize things and and that var Torah and now you like uh, well, what you forgot you forgot to write it down stuff like that. No need. Just read the parsha and explain whatever you remember. And uh, that's it. So okay, what else? Yeah, go ahead, yeah, go ahead. Does that go the same for uh, reading books on the Gedolim like uh, Ben Ishai and uh, Baba Sali and, and others such like that? Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, yes, it's, uh, I, I would say the second bit. That's a pleasure reading, right? But uh, it's, uh, I would say all of these uh, uh, autobiographies, they're, they're very inspirational. It's uh, a must. Uh, you you must read it. But uh, I would say since you have uh, since you have this greater potential on Shabbos and there is no disturbance, so it, it is something harder. Whatever you would not be able to, to read during the week and uh, like a, like a dessert, you can read this uh, autobiography for sure. Yeah, that's uh, that's a good thing. Okay. Very 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 inspirational. You see how this. Sages uh, lived, and some of them not, not long ago. It's like I don't know, fifty years ago, thirty years ago, hundred years ago. I mean, uh, it's not so long ago, and uh, through all difficulty they uh, they went, and, uh, and 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 we have washing machine, and we have uh, right, we have hot water in the house, and and uh, and, uh, and toilet, and uh, we still complain. You understand? They they didn't have all of this, and they kept uh, Shabbos perfectly. They never complained. And they did not have uh, the stove right? like, like we have with a gas stove with a perfect flame every time. And I, I was uh, I, I had a class earlier today, so and, uh, we were talking. So I was giving them example like in olden days, you put wood in this stove. Some like these logs are different size. Some of them from this wood, from that wood. Some are a little wet, a little uh, wood too dry. So and this woman had to like uh, calculate the exact time so it would be a perfect dish every time. So today it's exactly perfect temperature. It says uh, 350 degrees for two, uh, for 30 minutes and you're done, you're cold. But in all the days it was mission impossible, the way I see it. But for them it was normal. Okay, go ahead, any other questions? One more on the, um, um, I guess the washing dishes uh -huh. type. Um, because we have uh, we have the I guess uh, we buy the shabbos uh, sponges. Mm -hmm. So when so when uh, um, I guess we just uh, wash them down and just don't squeeze the sponge. Correct. No, but the, the, what was that? this uh, this shabbos sponge we 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 don't call it sponge sponge uh, don't say it sponge because sponge that's something that that is absorbent. Right, and this uh, they, they call it pods. Pods meaning that it's uh, synthetic things. They do not absorb zero, so you can squeeze them as much as you want. They they don't trap the water. But I would say my, my personal recommendation. Uh, so just buy more dishes. That's it. So I mean, don't don't make uh, like don't don't spoil your Shabbos. Uh, just enjoy. You understand the dishes is uh, I as I said. I, I always help people, I don't know, to, to find all of these deals. So you can find these deals like on, on different websites and JCPenney and, and the Macy's, they uh, they sell things so cheap when you buy in quantity, it's good quality. So just buy another, like uh, if you have a bigger family, so buy another, I don't know, like the 20 dishes. That's it. So why should you wash? Especially if you're planning on your wife to wash it. I mean, uh, she let, let her rest. You understand? So the, the proper way, if you, I have some students that uh, live in very, very poor countries, very, very like uh, terrible conditions. So for them, uh, like they, they must wash. I mean, 
that that's all they have they cannot afford like extra dish let's say right but uh but even they i mean they they they, they save a little and they buy extra dishes so it's proper it's, so you see the shabbos is a queen right and you you honor shabbos with a with a with a good food right with a good dishes with a good setting of the table with the flowers on the table and uh like uh, just, just think about it say the president or somebody person is a uh, uh of uh let's say <laughs> Uh, your own revenge leader, if he would come with his family, you're not going to say, Rabbi, wait, uh, I'm going to wash this. You would buy uh, like another 10, 20 dishes. You understand? So that's, uh, that's uh, if you would buy, you do it for him or somebody else uh, that you respect, for sure, it's, uh, there is no problem. It's uh, one, one more time, like they don't cost that much. In US, if you live in US, they don't cost that much. You understand? So, but if needed, so you can wash. Again, so if you have fancy schmancy, very expensive dish, and uh, I, I was in the house, and they told me I don't, I don't know well, that one one plate that we ate from it was a hundred dollars. I don't want to touch this plate. What if it breaks? I don't know. Like, but uh, but if you have simple plates, there is uh, already cost like few dollars a plate. It is no big deal. Okay, but. Again, you can wash, there's no problem. Okay, any other questions? Okay, no problem. So we stop here. So tomorrow, uh, we're going to try Skype. So if somebody here this uh, uh, did not register, please send, send me your Skype ID. I'm going to add them and uh, the way it works, I just call the group, but you would be able to, if you, even if you don't join right away, you would be able to join like later on. If you cannot join, just ignore, I guess. And that's it. All right. So good night until tomorrow. Business for Good night. Thank you. Good night.